Chapter 3. Joking. He did not want to part with the basketball, but Eric knew that if he caved right now, just a week before school started, he'd be a marked man for the whole year. It was funny, almost. School hadn't begun, but he was already taking his first test. Uh, actually, um, I do mind, Eric finally said. He didn't whine it or say it with a whimper. He just told it flat out. The sky was blue, the grass was green, and he would certainly miss the damn ball. But you guys can play with it, Eric quickly added. I mean, I was about to head home in a few minutes, but... Griffin laughed out loud. Dude, hey, we're just busting ya. He passed the ball back to Eric, a one-handed fling. I don't even like basketball. <sighs> Come on, Griff, let's go, I'm bored. It was the girl. She said, it's too hot. Let's find Sanjay and get in invited into his pool. Griffin looked at her and nodded once. Yeah, I guess, he turned back to Eric. So, he said, landing on the word with emphasis, like it was a complete thought, a summarizing statement. So, you really didn't see a kid come through here? For sure? Eric looked at him in the eye and blinked. I'm just shooting around. I'm like in my own little world out here. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Griffin looked around, slowly rubbed his hand across his chest and belly. Eric could see the doubt in Griffin's eyes. He volunteered. I mean, I think I would have noticed somebody if... I gotcha, Griffin replied, sharp and dismissive. Loud and clear. You didn't see him. Nothing wrong with that. We're just looking for one of our buddies. That's all. You can understand, can't you? Eric said that he could. Griffin's face brightened. Hey! I've got an idea, he said, snapping his fingers. This will be really fun, Eric. You will definitely enjoy it. We'll give you one shot from right there, he pointed at the foul line. And if you make it, you get to keep the basketball. If you miss, he shrugged, we take it. Sounds like a plan, Drew P. said. Yep, 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 Cody called out. That's when Eric recognized the voice. Cody was doing a pitch-perfect imitation of Petrie from The Land Before Time. Eric's younger brother, Rudy, had spent a full year obsessed with those videos. Come on, Griff, the girl persisted. This is so lame. Eric considered his options. There weren't any good ones. Okay, he relented. One shot, but what do I get if I make it? Ho, ho, Griffin exclaimed. Now he's bargaining, huh? I like that, Eric. Very ballsy. I bet a dollar he makes it, the girl said. I'll take that bet, Cody said. Griffin eyed her appraisingly, eyebrows arched in a mock surprise. You like the looks of him, huh? The new boy in town? She made a, oh, please, face, like the very idea was stupid. Let's just get this over with, Griff. So Eric dribbled once, twice, took a deep breath, and laid a brick. He missed everything. The backboard, the rims, the works. His heart sank. Air ball, chorted. D drew P. You owe me a dollar, Mary, Cody exclaimed. Mary. Her name was Mary. Griffin grabbed the ball. He set it on the ground, rested his foot on it, stood pondering the possibilities, then gently rolled the ball to Eric. Eric bent to pick it up and murmured, Thanks. The wizard slipped past his lips as a reflex just tumbled off of his tongue without thinking, and not a verbal somersault of ingrained manners. Thanks? And Eric kicked himself for saying it. What an idiot! Thanking these guys for not stealing his ball? Actually thanking them? How pathetic. I am disappointed in you, Eric. I really thought you'd make that shot, Griffin said. He lifted his bike off the ground, climbed back onto it. We'll see you in school, Eric. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a few classes together. Wouldn't that be special? We could go to the library and do homework together? He let out a friendly laugh like it was a, all a big fat joke. Yeah, Eric replied. The gang of four pulled away. Griffin gestured to, toward the pet cemetery and they headed for a gap in the fence. Eric let out a deep breath. The, he felt the tension seep out of his neck and shoulders. Good riddance, he thought. No wonder his shot fell short. Too stressed. The girl, Mary, was right. It was hotter than hell out here. Eric didn't hear Griffin return, Griffin's return, not until the boy was almost on top of him. Hey, man, G 
Griffin said, startling Eric as he pulled up behind him, back tires skidding. The others hadn't followed. It was just Eric and Griffin now, no one else. I don't want you getting the wrong idea, you know. We're just fooling around, right? I was never going to take your ball or anything like that. Yeah, I know, Eric said. Because he looked a little worried there for a second. Griffin laughed. No, no, Eric protested. I knew you were just having fun. Griffin flashed a smile, that hundred-dollar smile he could turn on in an instant. He reached out his fist. Are we cool, buddy? Eric tapped his fist against Griffin's. Sure. Welcome to Bellport, Griffin said, lifting both arms, hands, arms out wide. You ever need anything? Anybody gives you any trouble, you could just come find me. My name is Griffin Connolly. Everybody knows me. I'll watch out for you, okay? Eric nodded. I'm a good guy to be friends with, Griffin said. He placed a firm hand on Eric's shoulder. But I'm a lousy enemy. Eric already Eric had already figured as much. Maybe we'll hang out some day. I'll show you around town, Griffin offered. Of course, it will take all of five minutes because there's nothing to do around here. By the way, he said, leaning in close. My friend Mary, she said you were cute. Griffin grinned and gave Eric a knowing, heavy, le heavily lidded leer. Then he rose up on his pedal and rode away.